Hey guys, Chris here. This is MVC Tutorial 2 of 5, Routing, Controllers, and Actions. So right away I'm just erasing some of the commentary from the previous uh, exercise. Uh, I'm going to rename loader.php to autoload. So that's a better name for it. We're going to create a new class called loader. So what this actually does is load the controllers. Okay, so it's going to be in our app namespace. Um, okay, so we're going to create a few properties here. A uh, private URL, a private um, controller, and a private uh, action. So the way MVC works, uh, we need to be able to pass some values to our application so we can route to the proper controller. Uh, this is what we're defining here. We're just going to be using a simple get request to um, for our application. So our application is going to get have a get request with the parameters of controller and action. So con uh, controller is going to define which controller we're trying to get to and then the action is going to be the method that that controller should um, execute. So this URL, uh, if it's not empty, then set this URL equals to the entire get request. And if this URL controller is actually set, so let me go and put is set in the beginning of here of this statement. Um, okay, so if this URL controller is set, we um, okay so here's our else statement so we're gonna have a default of index so the index controller will or I'm sorry home is a better name so home will be our default controller and this controller will be equal to this URL uh, controller if it is actually set in that get request um, and the same thing uh, for action so I'm just gonna be replacing um, controller here in this uh, next if else block with action just a little bit of updating I should have done a find and replace but this is quick enough and our default action will be uh, index I think I think that's a better uh, method to call Okay, so now we need a function to execute or create our controller. So what we have to do here is first make sure that uh, the controller exists. So if this class exists, controller, this controller, uh, great, we'll carry on. And what we want to find is the, a base class. We haven't created our base controller class yet, but bear with me here. Uh, we're definitely going to need this. So now we're creating the base controller, uh, base controller, and um, it's in the app controllers namespace. And this, of course, is because it's a base. It's going to be an abstract uh, class interface. And we're going to only protect URL um, and protect action. Okay. So function construct on the construct, we're going to expect a URL uh, value and an action value. And all we'll do is set this URL equal to that URL parameter and the same for action. Next we need a execute action. So this is the portion where we'll actually be calling or we'll actually return an object um, in the form of an executed uh, method. So this uh, and this controller and of course our parentheses uh, and I'll just do a quick if this action is set so we'll only be calling this action if it actually exists okay and then finally uh, what our base controller is going to handle is executing our view now this code 
I already know is going to change. I'm kind of putting something together really quickly here, but the next video, part three of five, is going to focus more on uh, your view and templating. So this is a very contrived example for now. And this should give you a quick example of uh, you know what our application is aiming to do, which is just looking in our views directory, interpreting what our class name actually is, um, and then executing or loading that PHP file. Okay, so to make this video a little shorter, we're going to go ahead and fast forward through to um, finishing out the base controller um, and the loading of our controllers dynamically. Uh, from the controller we'll just echo back to the browser in, in order to make the example work and show you that this does work. Uh, step three uh, of this tutorial will be for views and templates and, and that sort of thing. So right now I'm just doing a little class introspection making sure that the base controller is part of the controller we're trying to load. So making sure um, you know a user isn't just trying to uh, load any type of class. This class that we're about to load and pass back uh, we need it to be part of the base controller. Okay so uh, we're just throwing exceptions for um, situations where a method uh, let's say uh, a user passes the, an action uh, that isn't supported by the controller we want to throw an exception at the very least so return so if the method actually exists inside of the object we're gonna return the actual controller and remember the base controller has URL and action as its default construct so we have to pass those values and this should be fine. Um, I think we're ready now to uh, go ahead and edit our index.php file and do some dynamic loading. Uh, just one last else statement, making sure uh, you know user might get a, an exception um, if the controller is not found at all. So controller, this controller not found, and this should be good. Okay, so here we are, we're back in index and we want to go ahead and create an expected controllers list. Um, so this protects against LFI, which is local file inclusion. We would hate for somebody to manipulate that controller uh, parameter and try to get a file to load that wasn't supposed to. So we're limiting this and we're being very strict about it for security purposes. Um, so now I'm in the home controller. Um, I already know our default index uh, function is what um, it will load if we don't define an action. Uh, so as you saw, I just, I'm in that function index, uh, we're only echoing. So if not empty, get and if in array uh, of get if inside of the array get controller uh, parameter if that controller name is inside of the expected controllers list then we have permission now to instantiate that controller object so we'll go ahead and pass this on over to our loader class, right, and then we'll uh, exec uh, create the controller. So that is now controller holds the actual object of that dynamic controller. We're not sure what it is, but um, our loader class is taking care of that for us, and our base ca class is executing the action. Okay, so I'm just going to pass home controller 
class loader not found we got to include this into our application require once and this is in our current path alrighty so let's try that one more time and now we're getting an exception controller home is not found uh, yeah this seems to be more of a namespace issue so uh, luckily we're only going to be loading controllers with this so yes this is very uh, hard-coded uh, coding the app uh, controllers namespace into this loader but um, for this example it'll definitely work regularly what you'd like to do is create some sort of configuration class and then load that configuration but uh, for this example we're just hard coding okay so I think we have enough now to uh, oh yeah home controller is, is gonna be a problem so home is actually the class that we'd be looking for so we have to rename this controller from home controller to home and of course uh, add the namespace uh, to the inner array. Okay guys so let's try that one last time and okay as you can see it's actually routing it's echoing what we need stay tuned for the next video 3 of 5 which will get more into views and at the bottom of each description I will list the code so you don't have to go through the tutorials